Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back to your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we are going to be talking about Ripple and XRP, as well as the vast majority of crypto and finance. And with that being said, let's dive on in. Listen, I hope everybody's having a beautiful day or beautiful night. The weekend is here. The weekend is finally here. And with it, well, we got a big update today. And what was that update? Well, it was the SEC protecting retail investors, right? Wrong. Well, we see here from Eleanor Tourette, new, the SEC Gov has denied Coinbase's petition for the agency to create transparent rules of the road for crypto. The SEC is standing firm on its belief that existing laws and regulations already apply to the crypto securities markets. Crypto securities markets. Guys, what is going on? Well, we've talked about it. The SEC is an absolute joke. It's, it, it, it's an agency that needs to be abolished. Gary Gensler needs to be stripped of his title. This is an individual that has over $100 million in his net worth. Think about that. Over $100 million in his net worth from, in quotation marks, personal investments. I'm sure that he's one of the best traders out there to, you know, have a, a massive amount of wealth of $100 million plus. This, to me, is screaming, screaming, slow the industry down. Slow it down. Let Wall Street jump in. Let the big players get in. That's all this is. Now, they put out a full statement. I'm not going to read it. I'm not going to waste your guys' time. In fact, all I have to do is read this quote that Gary Gensler himself posted. Today, the commission denied a petition for rulemaking filed on behalf of Coinbase Global Inc. First, existing laws and regulations apply to the crypto securities markets. Second, the SEC addresses the crypto uh, securities markets through rulemaking as well. Third, it is important to maintain commission uh, discretion in setting its own rulemaking priorities as well. Now, I'm not going to lie, guys. There's a ton of responses that, well, you could just make a ton of compilations about and laugh about it all day long. But at the end of the day, this is not funny, right? What we are seeing here is confirmation confirmation of what you may ask confirmation that gary gensler doesn't want clear rules on crypto regulation by enforcement is the only policy he will follow and why because it's easy paydays one two he wants to build this incredible resume of hurting not protecting retail investors but also at the end of the day I don't even think anyone takes the SEC seriously at this point. What we need to do and what we should have done a long time ago is abolish these rogue agencies that are going against the American people. Innovation is dying in the US because of individuals like Gary Gensler. And it's all for benefiting those that have ran the longest monopoly scheme ever. And that is the banking sector, the Wall Street sector. As we look at what's going on here, manipulation, corruption, it is so damn clear. Thinking Crypto One, Tony Edward had a lot to say. He actually posted it twice regarding this. You are corrupt and have no allegiance to the law. You should be fired immediately. And here we have the hypocrisy in arguing to the court on the one hand that the speech is not relevant to the market's understanding of how or whether the SEC will regulate cryptocurrency and on the other hand that him and sought and obtained legal advice from the SEC counsel in drafting his speech suggests that the SEC is adopting its litigation positions to further its desired goal and not out of a faithful allegiance to the law. And this is from Judge Netburn and of course the Ripple case. And here we have the SEC's actions are not just harmful policy. They are unlawful, and the consequences of the SEC's continued delay are severe for that reason too. Guys, Gary Gensler should be in prison. 
15 billion dollars in damages. I bring it up every single damn time that I talk about this clown. 15 billion dollars in damages was done when Jay Clayton dropped the lawsuit on Ripple. Beyond the 15 billion dollars, Gary Gensler has caused far more amounts in damages than 15 billion dollars. Look at FTX for an example that Gary Gensler let, let slide. Right there alone is well over the $15 billion in damages. Then when you combine Luna, Celsius, all of the other companies that Gary Gensler went after, all of the coins that he labeled that are securities in his words, and he continues to label this market as a securities market, he continues to do harm to the retail investor. He continues to slow the space down, continue to let the big players jump in on the demise of retail investors. This is a big problem. This is a huge issue. And again, why should tax paying citizens of the US be paying for Gary Gensler and the SEC and fund their, their idiotic and again, corrupt initiatives regarding crypto? Again, I'm so tired of Congress. And I'm so tired of all these players in this space talking and talking and talking, right? We need to see movement. We need to see action from those that are out here saying, oh, Gary needs to go. The SEC needs to go. And I'm not talking about individuals from this space. No, I'm talking about Congress. I'm talking about those that actually have an ounce of power. I know that they've been drafting bills and I know that they've been doing this and doing that as they say. But there's a lot more that can be done here. Beyond this, we see over here, Gary Gensler is a scumbag regulator, and I completely agree, who is controlled by Elizabeth Warren. Today, he and the SEC denied Coinbase's demand for new crypto rules. The SEC commissioner, Hester Pierce, has suggested many great solutions such as the safe harbor until Congress acts. I bet Gary has not read it. Now listen. When we look at what's going on here, um, I think that we need a completely new uh, you know, branch here to actually regulate crypto because nothing's working. I don't think that Congress is going to help. I don't think that the CFTC is going to help. I don't think any of these players are going to help. We need a different agency. We need an agency that not only is you know, actual players behind the, the regulatory scene, but it should also incorporate leaders from this space that know what the hell is going on, understand what the hell is going on, because they are going to act in the best interest regarding this technology, because we cannot afford to have crypto die so that the banking sector can continue to thrive and they can go about their monopoly ways. And I don't think that that's going to be the case. I've talked about it. I've talked about how technology will continue to thrive. I've talked about how crypto is still a massive key piece on the global scale of major innovations around technological advancements. But beyond this, we need to have a different branch that incorporates leaders from the space. It incorporates actual views that are going to allow for innovation to thrive. And it could also offer and open up millions of job opportunities as well for those that are willing to put in the time, put in the effort and actually build out the next generation of technological advancements. Again, this could happen right now. All we need to do is have the SEC stripped of its and, and, and by the way, I, I already think that they're acting beyond their jurisdiction, but they need to be stripped of their jurisdiction regarding crypto. There should, they, they shouldn't have a single hand in the pot around crypto. We need a new agency. Also, the chief legal officer at Coinbase commented already on this. Today, the SEC denied Coinbase's petition for roles for crypto after 18 months of silence. We went to court to get the response the law requires. With appreciation for the Third Circuit, later today we'll again seek its help by challenging the SEC's abdiction, or sorry, abdication of its uh, duty. And here we have down here, no one looking fairly at our industry thinks the law is clear or that there isn't more work to do. In congressional testimony, after we permitted to the list in 2021, 
Uh, the SEC chair himself declared that there are no regulatory authorities applicable to the cryptocurrency exchanges. Meanwhile, this week, the CFTC chair stated that under existing law, many of the tokens constitute commodities. We're grateful that two commissioners disagreed with the denial and called for real dialogue. We should be working together to create laws and rules that will benefit consumers and U.S. innovation, not defending lawsuits based on legal positions that change month after month. I completely agree with this. Again, this is what I'm talking about. Leaders from the space working with the regulators, working with those that actually make the decisions. This is crucial. And we, we also see down here from Johnny Dean, he's saying, Gary Gensler, with the backing of Elizabeth Warren, is 100% gaslighting the American people. In this letter, he states that there is nothing unique or new about cryptocurrencies and states existing laws easily apply to crypto. But that's not what Gensler said under oath. At his confirmation hearing, Gensler said crypto fell outside the purview of the SEC and the CFTC. He stated that the unique nature of crypto created a regulatory gap. Gensler was not alone in this determination. From the Hinman speech emails, we learned the Office of General Counsel and others also believed crypto fell into this regulatory gap. The Coinbase petition for rulemaking simply recognized that Gensler and other leaders of the SEC gov believed Except now, Gensler has done a full 180 for political reasons, and who knows, bribes? I, we don't know, right? We could speculate all day, but I do believe that somebody's getting paid off. The SEC is supposed to be independent from politics. Instead, it is just one more federal agency weaponized against the American people. Again, this is the big problem. Listen, I don't care why you got into crypto, but I could guarantee you right now that you got into crypto to get away from 99% of what's happening out there. And what's happening out there is the American people, and this is not just in the US either, it's a global thing. Individuals are getting completely screwed over day by day by day. Whether it be taxes, whether it be you know idiotic lawmaking, whatever the case may be, there's a monopoly system out there. The banking sector is a perfect example of how they continue to screw us. Hell, central bankers are a perfect example of how they screw us. Jerome Powell wants 2%, that's their target goal on inflation, which means you lose 2% of your value in a savings account. They literally want you to lose money. Tell me, does that sound beneficial to us? No. And this is the problem with our system. It's broken. Everything's broken. And it can go all the way down the food chain from the top to the bottom. There is many issues here. One of the biggest ones is conspiring against the American people for the benefit of the incumbents and for Wall Street. And I want to wrap this video up with this video. This goes back to November 10th because, again, this is Brad Garlinghouse on CNBC talking and telling us about these issues before this even came out. The SEC, in my opinion, has lost sight of their mission to protect investors. Ripple has wrapped up its flagship Swell conference here in Dubai. I spoke with Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse on stage at the event. I asked about Ripple's battle with the Securities and Exchange Commission over the status of its XRP token and what Ripple's recent court win means for the scope of SEC power over the crypto space. Listen in. Ripple has had three consecutive victories over the SEC on this. First, the judgment on July 13th saying very clearly XRP is not in and of itself a security. Uh, second, the denial by the court for their, their request for an interlocutory appeal. And third, the uh, dismissal with prejudice, the charge, uh, allegations against Chris Larson and myself. So, uh, you know, look, one of the things that people talk about is one of the definitions of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and thinking you'll get a different outcome. The SEC is doing the same thing over and over again, and they think, I guess, they're going to get a different outcome. At some point, and you and I talked also backstage about a, a grayscale, also had, a, a, I think, an important victory in the United States about the Bitcoin ETF, where the, the judge, again, this is a federal judge talking about a federal agency in the SEC saying, quote, the SEC is being arbitrary and capricious. You know, generally, 
judges tend to be pretty, you know, down the middle and try to you know, not be uh, dramatic. Like, those are damning words. So I, I think at some point, the SEC has to step back and realize that their approach of regulation through enforcement, let's just bring lawsuits, that, that has to break. So walk me through the next steps in this case. Today was the deadline for the briefing schedule for remedies. The SEC wants something like $770 million in disgorgement. Yep. What happens next? Well, I, 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 uh, in a session that I did in Washington yesterday, I made the joke around, I, I'd like to see the Vegas odds on you know, what, what could be the, what's called the remedies from the, the case. Look, it, it, I think we, the SEC, in my opinion, has lost sight of their mission to protect investors. And the, the question is, who are they protecting in this journey? And it, it turns out that the court will make, the judge will make a decision about remedies. We actually welcome that. Uh, I think that in this case, you look at what, in, what investors were harmed, and you also have to look at the securities laws and understand are there exemptions for institutional and you know, accredited investors and things like that. But look, I, I think it is a positive step for the industry, not just for Ripple, not just for Chris and Brad, but for the whole industry that the SEC has been put in check in the United States. And I'm hopeful this will be kind of uh, a, a thawing of the, the permafrost in the United States for you know, really seeing an amazing industry that has immense potential thrive in the largest economy in the world. And, you know, again, I, I couldn't have said this any better. And listen, it's not even just because Brad Garlinghouse is the CEO of Ripple. I honestly could care less about his role in Ripple. I could care less about the company Ripple. What I actually care about is the fact that Ripple did fight the good fight. They spent well over $200 million in legal fees to counteract what the SEC was doing. If Ripple bowed down to the SEC, this space would look 10 times worse today. I don't care if you're a Bitcoin maxi. I don't care what your thought process is on XRP. I don't care what your thought process is on Ripple or Brad Garlinghouse or Chris Larson. I don't care about any of that. You cannot take away the fact that Ripple, as a company, fought for the American people, fought for the people outside of the U.S. as well, fought for this entire industry, and fought for innovation that one is 100% crucial, not only for our future, but also for technology. At the end of the day, I strongly believe that the SEC 100% needs to be stripped of any oversight within crypto. I also think that Gary Gensler does need to be fired. He needs to be stripped of his title and he should never be able to work in the regulatory scene ever again because he has harmed more retail investors than anything alone in this space and even outside of this space. This is one of the worst individuals to ever touch crypto to ever be a part of anything retail, this should be and it should go into the history books as one of the biggest failures and one of the largest corrupt agencies out there. Because this, the, the SEC is a complete joke of an agency. Gary Gensler is a complete joke of a chair. And again, I always say, Without a doubt, I don't care who the regulators are. I don't care who's trying to target crypto, trying to kill crypto. This space will continue to thrive because there's far too much potential here. There is far too much um, disruption happening and the transformation that will happen from crypto being adopted outside of the US is far too much to ignore. The US will have no choice but to adopt crypto and accept crypto. I also believe that we're seeing a lot of moves on that front to get to that position, but it's going to take some time. Mika is a big thing. It goes live next year. I think that that's going to force a card, um, especially for the US. So we'll have to wait and see what happens. But guys, let me know what you guys think about this. In my opinion, this really does piss me off because we waited 18 months for the SEC to respond back to the chief legal officer at Coinbase and just for them to respond in the way that they they have it's ridiculous again 
when the when FTX wanted to meet with the SEC, it was immediate. They got word back. They you know turned a blind eye. Like what is going on here? We need answers. This is ridiculous. Like I said, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. If you guys did enjoy the video, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on. If you guys have more free content, you guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord in the description below. And with that being said, guys, it's been Nick. Peace out.